Hi, people. My name's Sandra, and I'm not a very decent person. Brave confession, huh? Well, what I say is true. I have been dating a guy just for the money for more than a year now, and my conscience does not particularly torment me. I was not lucky enough to be born in a rich family. My parents were neither of Saudi Arabia nobility nor oligarch. They both worked in the office, and their salaries were enough to pay bills and to live a moderately comfortable life, but nothing more. We had a house, two cars, good clothes, some nice computers and phones, but nothing outstanding. My parents and I were just a typical middle-class family from the suburbs. We and all the neighbors from the area lived similar lives. All of us saved money the whole year to have a nice summer vacation, enjoyed shopping during sales, collected discount coupons. But I always wanted more. Well, I guess I won't surprise you with my wishes. I'm pretty sure all teenagers feel that they deserve a personal castle and a brand new Xbox as well. To be fair, I understood that I had no way to earn all those riches besides of my appearance. I've got no talent for academic career because I had poor memory. I couldn't really understand most of the school material and wasn't able to cram it all, so my marks ranged from C plus to B minus. I'm pretty sure the teachers inflated them because I was pretty. I understood that I would never rise to heights and had no hope to earn a lot of money myself because I have neither brains nor business acumen. Of course, I could always try myself in modeling or some similar business, yet I was sure I'd fail. You see, two of my friends became models and they still don't drive Maybachs. In those professions where appearance is important, more than half of success is owed to dumb luck. You should be lucky to appear at the right place at the right time. If you do so, you turn into a star. If not, you'll be advertising pharmacy candles or some branded utensils till the end of your life. And you'll definitely earn no top dollar there. Of course, there was another way. Quite a humiliating way, to be honest, but still a way. Some good old lucky wedding has always been the way to success. Just find yourself a rich guy. Bonus points if he also happens to be handsome. Marry him and give birth to children till the end of your life. I was really hoping that I won't be such a trophy wife until the very last. You see, there were few truly rich men in our town, so I thought there was no danger for me there. But then, when I was still in high school, we had a pre-practice. Here they call it pre-practice when you work for the good of the state for a month, and you even get paid for a bit of your troubles. You can choose yourself where to go. Usually, there are workplaces at various government agencies, courthouses, academies, factories. The idea is that you will gain experience and an opportunity to look at the profession from the inside perspective, so to say. And the officials will have a chance to evaluate you. If they turn out pleased, they will then give you some recommendations or even immediately offer a job right there after you finish school. I, as always, went along the simplest path. I went to work at the city library together with two of my friends. I thought that there was little work at the library. I was not going to become a scientist, a lawyer, a police officer, or a rescuer, and I couldn't pass an opportunity to sort through books and generally fool around the library for a whole month. Therefore, I considered the library to be my salvation. My hopes were shattered at the very first day. There was actually a whole lot of work at the library, and the work was pretty hard. The librarians immediately sent us into the archives and forced us to sort books by the catalog. For you to understand the situation better, the books were kept in the boxes on shelves. So we had a bunch of very heavy boxes with books and needed to do an inventory. Of course, at first, we had to get those boxes down from the shelves. The work was agonizing to say the least. You see, we were just three slender girls, and we barely managed to lift one box at once with our combined strength. Well, okay, we somehow managed to cope with the task, at the cost of a couple of smiles sent in the direction of male workers. And then, two weeks later, they put me in charge of a no-sight book lending. And from that moment, my life experienced an irreversible change. As my mother says to this day, apparently, the stars have also wanted me to have my own Maybach and my own palace. Otherwise, I can't really explain our meeting with Charles. He could have used any grand library in the world, and he came to me. 
Well, at that moment, I didn't know he was Charles. I saw just another handsome, smiling guy with a student's badge who asked me for a couple of rare old chemistry books. That's how our relationship kind of started. I worked in the study hall. He came almost every day, took his books, and sat there behind the desk almost until closing time. Sometimes he asked me something, but he actually wasn't trying that hard to make a conversation. I don't know why I did so, but on the last day of practice, I wished him good luck and informed him that it was time for me to return to school. When he heard that, he finally made the first step and invited me to dinner. At first, I wanted to decline the invitation, but then I understood that I wasn't actually losing anything. A date's just a date. It won't compel me to anything. Well, in the end, I agreed. And then an evening of wonders followed. First, Charles was already waiting to pick me up after work in his car. Not a Bentley, of course, but a BMW of the last series. That car alone cost more than my parents' whole house. And then he drove it to a classy restaurant, one of the best and most expensive in our city. At that evening, I somehow guessed that Charles was rich. Soon, he himself admitted that he was already 22 and he had his own business with computers. I still don't understand the details because I'm dumb as a toast, but that didn't matter much. So we began dating. When Charles had free time, he picked me up after school in his car, drove me to different places, gave me cute truffles as he called them. As for me, I was in total shock because in my world, no one called on the latest model of iPhones gold bracelets with diamonds, or even an evening of shopping at luxury boutique truffles. These were the things people saved up for or considered it an excessive opulence. Charles has obviously fallen in love. He planned our dates, clearly tried to show himself in the best possible light, was sweet as possible, and touchingly courted me. In some time, he even started talking about the wedding and asked me to meet his parents. As for me, well, to be honest, I liked him. For me, he was a good acquaintance and a cool friend, but nothing more. I definitely was not in love with him and poorly hardly imagined the situation in which I'd feel wildly passionate about him. I couldn't even think about the wedding or our first night, but I still continued our relationship because I definitely liked being a girlfriend of a rich guy. Yeah, it was totally dishonest and shitty on my part, I know. Charles did not deserve to end with a gold digger girl. He was really a cool, smart, funny, and kind man, but I simply could not refuse the possibility. It was as if I made it to a completely different world. Shopping in Milan, a weekend in Paris, a vacation in Bali in the best five-star all-inclusive hotel. Not in the middle of nowhere with a tent as I'd been used to before. Charles did not spare money at all. Moreover, he foresaw any and all of my wishes. I didn't even need to ask for anything. I suspect that he scooped up the ideas from Instagram, having read several posts about the typical girl's dreams of a beautiful life. He was trying to anchor me to his riches so that I would not run away. First meeting with his parents also went smoothly. They turned out to be very nice and kind, but despite the difference in status, they had a nice chat with my parents and readily accepted me into the family. Charles's mother even dragged me with her on shopping fitness, and to the beautician. Good thing she didn't try to braid me, although she once admitted that she'd always wanted a daughter. The truth was revealed to me out of nowhere. It was kind of like slammed in my face. At that moment, I was already acquainted with both of his parents, although naturally, I communicated more with Charles's mom. Still, I knew that Charles's dad was the main philanthropist of the city who personally maintained several hospitals and collected funds for those in need through all kinds of balls, charities, and other events. Anyone could respect that, but I myself had neither money nor desire to do such work. But Charles, as he told me himself, often participated in such events, and I sincerely adored him for it. But at one point that image collapsed. We stayed for a weekend in his parents' house, and there, with my own eyes, I saw how my kind and nice fiancé stole money intended for orphans from the special lockbox. Charles just went somewhere in the middle of the night, but I was curious, so I followed him. And then I personally observed how my fiancé opened the lockbox in the reception hall, still full after another charity ball, and took almost half of its contents. 
and then he returned to our bed with a usual sweet smile. Naturally, I made a scene. Well, I just couldn't stay silent at the sight of such atrocity. That night, Charles admitted to me that his computer business existed only on paper and went bankrupt a long time ago. So in order to get money for all of my wishes, the guy was just robbing the needy. But the most horrible thing was Charles' self-righteousness. He was totally sure that he was not doing anything wrong. It didn't look like a theft to him. He just took what he wanted. He literally pulled the money out of his father's pocket, but did it only for my sake. He admitted that he could ask his dad for money without robbing, but he desired independence. And that abnormal decision was my fiancé's idea of independence. I didn't really know whether his father was aware of Charles's treatment of charity money or not, but the picture that emerged in my mind was horrible. And for the first time, I sincerely started wondering whether I could build a life and a healthy relationship with such a person. But then, I came to the same conclusion as before. I really needed money. I did not want to be nobody once again. Just a useless girl with a pretty little face who had only one possible future. A constantly tired husband, a couple of kids, alone on a house in some suburb, and zero hope altogether. Therefore, I managed to silence my conscience, which had turned out to be pretty simple. I just decided to do something good with the money I had. Me and Charles didn't break up. On the contrary, we set a wedding date. Of course, I didn't love him, and I still believed that his actions were disgusting. But I liked the lifestyle of a rich man's doll. And in order to keep my consciousness silent, now I go to a shelter once a month and donate large sums of money. Plus, I play with children, because the little ones need not just money, but also communication. So, here's my story. Write in the comments what you think about it. Write honestly, please. Even if the only things you have for me are curses. Did you encounter a similar choice in your life? What did you choose? Please, still share the video with others and do not forget, you will have to pay for everything sooner or later. So it's best to start right away.